Good morning. It is Wednesday, November the 9th, uh, around 8 o'clock in the morning Eastern Time. Just going to run through the morning charts here and uh, see what's unfolding in pre market trading. Now, this is the four hour US dollar chart, and more or less, I've been pointing out the past uh, couple weeks here. We've had this nice impulse wave to the upside. Again, I call it an impulse wave because it's broke two previous pivot highs and now that we've got a nice strong move to the upside usually you look for some type of consolidation um, a pause and from there you'll usually see it move back up now yesterday we saw the US dollar more or less head lower and that actually helped boost uh, the equities market and commodities we saw them all move up nicely yesterday overall though it was pulling back within a nice more or less bull flag and I pointed out it's it's likely uh, we're going to come right down into a key support zone here and we're finally going to see some type of bounce and most likely a sharp move to the upside in the US dollar well this morning we've got a huge move up in the US dollar it has put a ton of pressure on equities it hasn't hurt commodities as much and um, I'll kind of cover each one as we go forward here but you, we're seeing the US dollar move up and that usually is very uh, negative for equities it is right now so I do anticipate to see a simple measured move if you just look at the bottom of this move at 75 and you just count how far up uh, this past rally went this nice bull run here we've got one two two and a half cent move up if we do a simple measured move from the bottom of this flag we can go one two two and a half which puts us right here at the 79 level so we've got a potential for another strong leg to the upside and if we see that unfold, uh, it will bring us more or less into a resistance zone, which will be more or less just by these, this pivot high and through this pivot top over here. So if we see that, we're going to see equities likely sell off quite sharply and uh, continue to head lower, which is what we are positioned for. Now, taking a look at crude oil and how it's, oh, you can see on this chart here, this blue overlining uh, line here is the SP 500 futures so and same with the US dollar index this is a 24 hour clock on these you can see how the US dollar moved up sharply this morning and equities have pulled back uh, also equally sharply if you just kinda just look at the line chart you can see we're trading down at a support zone and uh, I've been pointing this out in the equities market it looks as though we're forming you know a bit of a head and shoulders pattern here and this shoulder here uh, is a good sign that usually we see lower prices so this morning we have seen the the SP 500 at the low this morning a couple hours ago it actually dropped three percent in pre-market trading came down to the support trend line is just holding right here right now uh, if we do we might see it bounce up a little bit take a breather but we could actually see it break down and actually start a much larger move to the downside and next major support zone will be down through these tops uh, these blue tops here which is right here and this consolidation of the possible the breakout that we had before so there's big potential this is what I've been positioning ourselves for um, this kind of in uh, this head and shoulders with this kind of bearish pattern moving up and of course the strengthening dollar is signifying that uh, we could see prices move down even more so let's take a quick look at crude oil how is a strong dollar affected crude oil this morning we can see here this is zoomed out several months and I zoomed out pretty far just because I wanted to kind of show this resistance area which we've got this previous high is going to act as resistance I pointed it out yesterday that we're seeing crude oil more or less run up into this tight little kind of wedge here into resistance and uh, we've, we're seeing a pullback it's pulled back about a dollar fifty or two dollars this morning actually I think a little bit more than that about two dollars this morning it's trading at the lower end of its range same as the SP 500 if uh, if we see further strength in the US dollar we might see this support line actually broken and for crude oil to break down and I'll just zoom in a little bit here just to show you but I pointed it out yesterday once we break this support trend line this is going to be the same with the equities market too once we break this support trend line we're gonna have these pivot lows where everybody's gonna have their stops depending where they got in their stops placed so as the market falls we're going to see the, if these levels get taken out we're going to see large volume surges of stops getting taken out so as it starts to go down uh, it'll start triggering stops and it'll pick up speed and and create quite a sharp 
drop and probably come down into a middle support zone which will be through the middle of this previous noise once it's shaken out all these stops. So usually when you get an extended run to one way, one direction, you'll usually see the market buck everybody out of that position by uh, running as many stops as they can until it comes down to the next major support zone. So I do like crude oil. I was thinking about taking a short into the close yesterday, adding to our SP500 and possible crude oil, but um, I'm going to wait and see what type of play we get today. Maybe we actually get a little bit of a bear flag uh, form today with uh, some good volume favoring it. We might actually take a short position in crude oil and uh, and then see it maybe break down and do this move. So I've got my eyes open on a couple different plays. We're going to just see how things kind of unfold going forward. We are positioned for lower prices uh, and hopefully we do kind of get them. So that's what I'm looking for right now. As for gold, we've seen a strong US dollar this morning and gold pretty much is actually holding up and actually moving up with the dollar as I kind of pointed out yesterday. If we're going to have some serious issues overseas, which obviously there are, but um, what we're going to see is money moving out of the euro, we're going to see money moving into the US dollar as the safe haven and we're also going to see money move into gold uh, also. And so we're actually seeing gold move up uh, with the US dollar. Now we are trading into a pretty major resistance zone here. We've got a pretty pretty key resistance level and gold's been moving up there on, on, on average to declining volume but again you don't want to be shorting gold. I think gold and the US dollar are going to be a pretty safe play going forward and um, you know strengthening dollar and kind of an eroding euro land is going to really trigger some strong sell-off in stocks so we're going to try and play the short side of stocks and uh, maybe even short the euro or go long the dollar and um, there's a couple different plays we'll, we'll, we'll take a look at going forward as things kind of more unfold. Looking at silver, silver is uh, holding up well today also. Um, silver is kind of the, the poor man's gold. A lot of people want to go get into it. It's kind of just hanging out here uh, trading I'm not a fan of this type of pattern here. Once this starts to break, if if it were to break, we've got a couple uh, pivot lows. Silver is fairly thinly traded, and I wouldn't be surprised if we see a huge sell-off in the equities market. We could actually see silver drop down with it, but um, silver stands a good chance to move up with gold. I just think it's a little more random, and uh, you you know you can get 30% moves in a day or two. It, in silver, so you got to be very, very cautious. I think the safe play is actually the U.S. dollar uh, and gold and and short equities at this time. So that's kind of what I'm going to be looking for, and uh, and go from there. Now looking at bonds, this is the bond futures. I'm just going to change the time frame to go to uh, the 24-hour clock. You can see yesterday we had a pull, a little bit of a pullback. We had a bounce in the morning, and then equities. Uh, the U.S. dollar started to fall yesterday and equities rallied and money came out of bonds and poured into equities. But uh, overall, the bond chart still held up really well. If I go to the 24-hour chart, you can see money today is actually, this is just zoomed in a little bit, but you can see money this morning has started to pour back into bonds and they're coming out of stocks. Now, if you look at this chart, what does this this recent pattern here look like? Looks very similar to the U.S. dollar index. You've got a nice impulse wave up. You've broken a couple pivot highs, and you had nice strong volume backing it up. And more or less, you've got this nice kind of bull flag forming. And it looks as though bonds uh, next might be you know have a nice potential move to go up and test these previous highs. And of course, if bonds go up, that means people are piling out of stocks. They're pulling their money out of equities and dumping them into the safe havens, which will be gold, bonds, and just going to cash because they don't want to. They, so a lot of people don't know how to trade a down market, so they just go to cash and hold U.S. dollars. So that's kind of where we stand right now with bond prices. The chart is looking bullish on this four-hour chart still. Looking at the SPY ETF to get a feeling of regular trading hours. This is the normal ETF. Uh, the masses really follow. Overall, this is that head and shoulders. I've zoomed out about uh, two, um, a month and a half here, but here's that shoulder, the head, and this is that regular trading hours kind of limb that's kind of hanging off here. The fact that it's just done this kind of grind up. There's been some good volume. I can't complain about the volume. Usually I'd really want to see volume uh, dry right up. 
as it gets up into a resistance zone and fills these these gaps here but uh, there's been strong volume all the way up but overall the market uh, momentum and everything is kind of telling me we're at a pretty major resistance level the market is overbought everybody was piling into the market yesterday about five people buying to everyone selling so that means the generally if I if I see that reading over three um, I consider the market to be uh, overbought you don't want to be buying into it because everybody else is buying into it and usually it can take a day or two to roll over and then you see it fall so this morning we're actually going to see the SP 500 is trading down here at the 25 area in pre-market trading it's below the support trend line so we might see some type of little bit of a, a, a pause or maybe even it could actually muscle its way back up to fill this big gap if I just zoom in a little you'll actually see this I'll just quickly draw it here we've got a we're gonna have a gap from yesterday's close to Oop, let me just grab the box here. Yesterday's close to it went all the way down to 25, a little below 25 this morning. It's about 25.50 now. So we've got this big gap window. So at this time, the market is trading down here. So we could see it um, actually muscle its way up because it will. It is trading more or less on a support trend line. We could see the market. I see this happen all the time. Market gets overbought, has a huge gap down, and then you see it kind of do what. Uh, you just see it kind of drift its way up, fill most of this gap or all of this gap, and maybe even pierce to a new high, and then it just gets clobbered and sells off. And of course, if this move happens, we want to see volume declining into almost nothing, and we may actually be adding to our position. Now, if that doesn't unfold, I still might be looking to add more to the position. We'll see how it plays out. We've got the support trend line, and the SP 500 is going to open right on the trend line pretty much this morning. So if we see a breakdown or we see it just kind of ride sideways, kind of up this trend line with rel relatively declining volume or large selling spikes, looking at the futures uh, charting, then we might actually look to take another short position, and uh, and we could see a breakdown from there and start triggering all these these pivot lows, which is where pivot stops uh, or protective stops are going to be in place. And as the market sells through them, it's going to pick up speed and go into quite a sell-off. So there's a there's a good potential for a big downward move in the next uh, few trading sessions. And that's kind of where we, we stand and where we're positioned right now. Looking at the futures charts, you can actually see what's unfolded in overnight trading and pre-market in the SP500. This is yesterday's price action. I'll just bar it up here. Here is yesterday's price action which is the high volume, that's regular trading hours. Remember the low volume, that's um, right after the trading session. That's actually you know, uh, late at night up to midnight. And then you've got pre-market going forward. So we've got huge volume this morning, a lot of selling. That is huge volume for pre-market trading. That's almost as much as a regular trading session. So there's some big movement going on, big money moving, shuffling their positions. So anyways, we saw the dip yesterday in the morning, and then it got muscled right back up. And in overnight trading, it kind of just flags sideways for a bit, and then it just just fell off a cliff. And you can see it's actually started to trigger these pivot lows here. It's had a pivot low here, pivot low here, and th those are the two that we've that we've broke. And right now, it's trying to stabilize and trying to hold its ground. But uh, you can see it really fell off a clock uh, off. Uh, Pretty much off the wall here this morning, and now it's it, it's just so oversold. We sold from 12.75 down to 12.40, almost a three percent drop, uh, which is huge. And um, it came right down to actually where we started to uh, short it uh, just a couple days ago. So we're going to be opening about flat on our position. We'll see how that plays out. With any luck, we're going to see maybe the market just trade sideways here for a bit, and then possibly break down later today. Well or this week. So that's kind of where we stand and the price action that's been going on. Now one other thing I just want to pop out here is the SPY ETF. I'm just going to flip to the the daily chart so you can kind of get get out of this uh, four hour chart. Now the reason I use the four hour charts is simply because it allows you to zoom back months and you get to see all the intraday price action. So you get to see large patterns within all the days combined. And a lot of people don't look at it, which is why it, it works to be so accurate, because uh, not everybody's following it. They're looking at shorter term or longer term charts, and uh, they just don't see what we see. But looking at this 
recent price action here what I want to show is we had the market top out back here in May had a move down and then we got a nice strong uh, we got a, a we had a little bit of a resistance level here it finally broke out and then it pulled back and uh, we kind of got this lift back up and then we got this huge waterfall price action well it's very similar price action a little bit bigger this time we've got the resistance level we've had the nice run up we had a strong gap down and now we're kind of coming back filling these gaps there's a gap here and a gap here and we've pretty much filled those gaps now and overall the trend is more or less still down on the short on this kind of intermediate time frame and we could we're gonna see the market gap down here again today we could see the market really start to go into one of these waterfalls just like what we saw back in here in August so that's kinda of what I'm trying to position ourselves for and um, just gonna let it play out and we'll just kinda of take it one bar at a time really that's all you can do anyways that's it for this morning and I'll talk to you guys in a bit bye bye